Greetings, Glitter Gang, and welcome back to the Vintage Staples album series. Today is Monday, May 9th at 2 o'clock, and this is our Scrapbook Day after party. So Scrapbook Day was on Saturday this weekend, and now we're going to celebrate it. We're going to keep the party going. Um, I hope you all had fun this weekend and saw all kinds of cool stuff. I have a cat on the floor. She's confused. She doesn't know what's happening. She's like, it's Monday, but you're doing a show. What is up? All right. So this is part of a series on my YouTube channel and in the archives where we're taking... Um, inspiration from sort of staples like office supplies and things of that nature, paper bags, party supplies, that kind of thing, to make a photo album in the style of a junk journal, okay? So um, right now as it stands, it's going to be four pages of chipboard. That may get added to as we go on. If it does, those pages will be added in the middle um, since the front and the back match so we can add pages in the middle if we want to stretch it out since the middle doesn't match okay so that's that so in the series i've covered these i've gone over the hey are you what 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 i've covered these i've gone over the supplies that i'm going to be using the paper etc um, as well as i have quite a few videos now on how to make all the different staples that I have on hand that I'm going to be using. So like these are bags of staples from my staples bin, but this is a tag that we made last week. And then this is the tag uh, from last week. But then here, you know, so I've shown you how to make a bunch of different things. Okay. So tags, I showed you how to make coin envelopes. Okay. That sort of thing. All the measurements have been given. All you need to do is just check out the playlist. And the reason I started with making the staples is so that every time I use a staple or if I remake a staple, I don't have to re-tutorialize you on how to make that staple. You can just go back to the playlist, find the video on paper bags, for example, and pick up from there. So like, for example, this is a Michaels paper bag. I took it apart so that I could show you all how they go together. This is a file folder with sides so that things won't fall out of it if it's bound into a book like so, okay, so that we can use that, all that kind of stuff. All right, so that everything, see any, all these things, I've shown you how to make all of them. Come on, come on. You wanna come say hi to your friends? Really? <laughs> Are you trying to embarrass me? Are you trying to embarrass me? Huh? Are you trying to embarrass me? Okay. All right. So, so that's the whole, that's the whole project. All right. Okay. So basically I've done all the staples. So now in terms of like tutorial for construction and all of that. I think like we're finished. So now all we have to do is the fun part, you know, which is just like playing with supplies and stuff. I'm going to skip the front cover for now. Um, and then we'll get to work on the first layout. So here are my goals for this. Okay. My goals for this are one, that it be a photo album and not a junk journal, meaning clear, defined places for four by six photos okay so that's goal number one and then goal number two is that it have the feel of a junk journal with like lots of things to flip in and out of etc so the first thing I want to do today is I want to make a um, a giant I want to make giant photo corners to hold a photo mat uh, for um, uh, two four by six photos. Well, rather four four by six photos. Um, and so I am going to give you a measurement, um, but it's very simple. It's six and a half by eight and seven eighths. And six and a half 
A piece of six and a half by eight and seven eighths inch cardstock will hold four, four and a quarter by six and a quarter photo mats, okay? So I'm gonna use off-white photo mats in this project because, um, you know, that's the, uh, what's more in keeping with the type of papers that we're using is off-white versus white-white, okay? And then I am going, I'm trying to decide, and maybe you can, if I wanna use for things like photo mats, do I wanna use black? Do I wanna use dark brown? You know, what, hey kitty, hi. What color cardstock do I wanna use? Can you, okay, you need pets? Here, let's do this. Come on up, get onto the desk. All right, let's do some pets. Okay, so let me know if you want to do, so we're definitely using cream. So we can do dark brown, we can do black, um, we could do craft. You know, any of those colors will work. Um, what about the envelope color? Oh, the manila. I think with the manila, well, we could do the manila as well. There's not as much of a contrast between the photo mat and the manila as maybe I might prefer, just like personally to my taste. Um, but that does not mean we can't use the manila sometimes at least. So let us, let's use dark brown. All right, so I have a bunch of dark brown from Basil. Um, and I, what I'm gonna do is I'll tell you the color, or it's American Crafts. No, it's Basil, okay. I mean, I think American Crafts owns Basil now, if Basil's even still a thing. All right, so the branding strip says that this is milkshake, okay? So what I'm gonna do, this is Basil milkshake, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my swatch book out and I'll tell you what color from the Color Mates is the closest to the milkshake. That way, if you wanna replicate, you can. Hey, BB. Um, but I don't think there's quite a, a light, warm brown. I think cocoa is going to be the closest. Hi, kitty. Hi. Yeah. Cocoa is the closest, but as you can see, they're not very close. So there's not really a light brown like, oh, you're so cute. Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe we're not crafting today. Maybe it'll just be cat petting. <laughs> that's just what we'll how we'll celebrate scrapbook day is we'll just pet cats so coco is the is the closest wow she's very happy right now are you a happy kitty all right so coco is is the equivalent in color made smooth and silky i do think coco is a little nicer I just want to use some this basil up a little bit, I think. So that's why I'll, I'll, why I will go with that. So what I'm gonna do? Hi. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. What's going on with you, huh? Milkshake does look good against the Manila. It does. Uh, milkshake because they're both so warm. I think. They're both so warm in tone. And the manila is fresh cream, right? Is that what you are? Yeah. Manila is fresh cream. And then here's fresh cream against the cocoa, kitty. Can you just move for a second? There you go. You can see it right there. Fresh cream and cocoa look well together as well because cocoa is warm. It's just not as warm or as light. It's just a little darker and a little cooler. That's an awfully dark brown to be a milkshake, this one. <laughs> yeah, that's not at all what chocolate milkshakes look like. Is it? <laughs> Is it? Oh my goodness. Okay, all right, okay. All right, buddy. Can I have this, please? Can you let me 
let me have, thank you. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, um, it matches your milkshake. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, I'm gonna cut six and a half by eight and seven eighths. I'm gonna cut, I don't know. Let's cut. You like a lot of chocolate? <laughs> Well, Kathleen's, uh, Kathleen's making good milkshakes. We should all go over to Kathleen's for milkshakes because she's, she's not skimping on the chocolate at her house. Okay. All right, I'm going to make six of these. Kitty, don't bite that. All right. Well, you're... Okay. Okay, Kitty. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to make six... Again, six and a half by eight and seven eighths. And that will hold two photo mats and then we'll stamp them. And we'll just have six ready to go um, to insert and use in this project. So then we'll know we'll have plenty of photos. So when I do that, I'm gonna do the cut for the six and a half first so that we then have a five and a half inch piece Guess who's standing on my cardstock again? Guess who? Yeah. Okay. I don't, all right. <laughs> Apparently we're not allowed to have shows on Mondays. We're not, oh my goodness. Okay. You're okay. <laughs> kitty, 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 kitty. You're not a very good Sioux scrapper. Can I help you? Oh my gosh, thank you very much. Okay. Can you let me cut these, huh? Can I cut these? No, no. She's like, it's not Thursday yet. Oh, now she's sitting on the paper trimmer. See, she knows where my attention is. She knows where my attention is and she's like, gotta be right in the middle of it. And she knows something's up. She knows something's up. She knows that it's not the right day for this. She knows it. She's like, I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. I know. I know. Yeah, you do know, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. All right. Okay, I guess we'll start with two. All right, so let's get the stamp, our stamp set and let's pick what we want to use for our placement stamp. I just have to find my placement stamp set, which I tidied. So, of course, now I don't know where it is. All right, let's see if I can figure out where I tidied it to. There it is. Okay. All right, so for our placement stamp, I think I'm going to use, um, I'll use a camera, but I'm just trying to think about the font. I think for the font, um, All right, so we've got four options. We've got the all caps sans serif, we've got the lowercase sans serif, um, and then we've got the two script, and one of the script seems to be missing. My guess is it's in my, um, in my Misty. It's in my Misty. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, oh, and it's set up to be vertical is set up to be vertical, so we'll have to move the Misty around. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, where that this is, this is my old photo placement stamp, <clears throat> 
and it is centered in a four by six photo mat. So what I can do here is I can just set this camera over that camera and pick it up and then it'll be centered more or less. And then once I have it that down, I can put my fonts. So I think I want my other, my other uh, script font is a little bit bolder. So I think I'll go with the slightly bolder script font. And then I'm gonna uh, use the four by six for this one, but then I'm gonna take it off so that, um, you know, I can peel it off anytime I'm not stamping a four by six. Okay, and then just to give you an idea of what this is gonna look like, you can kind of see through it to see how it is gonna stamp in the center of that, okay? All right, oh man, this stamp is. <laughs> this will happen with photopolymer stamps. They do take on, they do stain, they do take on the color of the inks used on them. So that's normal uh, for a photopolymer stamp. Acrylic will not do that, but acrylic is not gonna give you as nice of an image. So you can either have, you know, a dirty stamp that does a good job, <laughs> or you can have a clean stamp that does a less good job. All right, so now that we've got that set up, we just need to pick an ink color, and I'm thinking a dark brown versus a black. All right, let me go look at my inks. Let me make sure there's no cat trying to trap me. All right, there's no cat trying to tra trap me. I think she got bored with me. All right, so I'm looking at my inks. I really wish I had versifying in like a dark brown. Why don't I? Past Catherine, why did you never buy a versifying in a dark brown? What was that about? Huh? What were you thinking there? All right, I do have archival ink in vintage photo and ground espresso. So let me try using archival ink and ground espresso and see how I like that. By the way, if you're curious about this stamp um, and you want to know uh, where I got it or how to get one of your own, uh, there's links in the video description if you're watching on YouTube or if you are watching in the archives. Um, this is on my website, which is katherinescraps.com in the shop. Okay, so ground espresso is like dead. So it's not gonna work, so that's fine. Okay, so stamping inks. All right, what do I want? All right, so these are all my inks that I have refills for that are like stamping inks. They're from Fresh Inks. I'm missing part of my guide. Oh, here it is. The one with the browns, I think chocolate, because cocoa is too warm, so chocolate. Okay, so, oh, it's on the top. How nice for me, how nice for me. We'll see if it's inked or if it has to be refilled. I'm feeling like it's gonna have to be refilled. Yep, okay. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's a good start, good start, good start. All right, here's my chocolate refill. I'm just gonna give it a good shake. And then I'm gonna rub the ink like into the pad, kind of spread it around. All right, now just remember use you know whatever you've got you don't have to have this 
exact ink. You can just use any dark brown ink. You can use black ink. Um, ugh. Okay. I need to get a new baby wipes out out of baby wipes all right i hope everyone had a great weekend okay apparently i'm having a problem streaming let's just see if that resolves itself if not um you know every, i am making a local recording and that local recording will be clean so um, what is uploaded to YouTube won't have any issues and what is uploaded to the archives won't have any issues. All right. Okay, so let's try that again. Now that my stamp is very juicy, all right, there we go. Okay, so it's a little too juicy now. So I'm just gonna stamp it a couple times. Huh, something. I may just have to use black if I'm going to be like having all this drama with brown. <laughs> Who would have thought we were just going to have to quit trying to have matching inks? All right, I'm just going to use Versafine because that always works. It's not going to be a big deal. This is just a photo placement stamp. It'll eventually be covered up with a photo, so we'll be all good. All right. Okay, so let me stamp a few of these. I'm going to stamp a bunch at once. Um, the reason I'm pulling the stamp set down is so that the edge of the Misty hangs off my desk so that it's easy for me to um, close it. I know other people use, like, put handles on their Misty and all of that. And I, it's, I keep meaning to, and I just never do. <laughs> so there you go. Story of my life. I meant to do it, then I didn't. Um, I have ordered two inch black rings for this album. We need four of these per So we need 16 if we're going to do one on each page. So best to just do all of our stamping. So there's four. So that's all right. So let me say hi to everyone in the chat. Hello. Greetings. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. It was Mother's Day here in the U.S. It was scrapbook day. Did anyone do anything fun and crafty this weekend? All right, so hi to Beverly. Good morning, Beverly. Or er, good afternoon. All right, that's two. And hello to Carol Joan as well, Gretchen. Gretchen's excited to be here on a Monday. All 
I'm less excited to be here on a Monday. My whole, like, I was so confused, you know, the whole, the whole day. I just, and I had to keep just telling myself, you have a show today, you have a show today, you have a show today. Um, so that I wouldn't just get in my normal Monday routine and, like, be working out when I was supposed to be showing, doing a show. <laughs> so. That would have been bad. It would have just been me vlogging from my exercise bike. Like, hey, everyone. Join me for my World Health Challenge. Um, so we've also got Kathleen here. Welcome, Kathleen and Melanie as well. Welcome to both of you. Donna is here too. Donna, hello. Um, Ella is also here. Hello, Ella. How are you? Let's see. Deb is here and she said she went through her Seven Gypsies bins this weekend. So Seven Gypsies is one of the brands that I had a bunch of staple type items from. And we do have a tutorials on, uh, in this playlist on how to make all the different Seven Gypsies, uh, vintage staples. So... Um, let's see. Melanie started an album this weekend. I sent my mom Lego flowers. So Lego has a series called the Botanicals Collection, which is, you know, recreations of actual real flowers. Um, and I got her the succulent set. And then my sister got her the orchid. So she got Lego flowers from both of us this weekend. So my sister and I have put the succulent together and it takes two people, you know, an hour or two to put it together. So it's not too difficult if you like succulents but can't keep them alive and you think maybe Lego succulents are the way to go, you can probably handle it. Um, so I, wait, the original distribution of labor was that I was doing the assembly and she was doing the sorting, um, because she's put Legos together and knows that sorting is an important job and whatever. However, I was like so terrible at assembling Legos that I was almost immediately demoted to sorting. Um, but I will say that I was amazing at sorting. In fact, I was so good at sorting that I was also constructing after a while um, because um, she couldn't keep up with my masterful sorting abilities, you know. So the moral of that story is, you know, we're not all good at the same things. And just because you're bad at one thing doesn't mean you should feel like you're bad at all things. You know, there's a place for you in the Lego assembly chain. <laughs> so it's a metaphor for life, everyone. It's a metaphor for life. All right, so now I'm going to clean up my Misty and my stamp. And then we will get to making this project. Okay. I don't know where to put this to live. So um, maybe you can just live there. All right. And then this is going to live here. All right. Just. Okay. All right, so there we go. All right, I've got two of these. What I'm gonna do now that I'm not being harassed by a cat is I'm gonna quickly make four more. Remember, these are six and a half wide by eight and seven eighths inches long. Um, and that eight and seven, that seven eighths inch, that gives you um, a, uh, a one eighth inch around each 
um, each photo. So that's why it's eight and seven eighths versus nine. Because if it was nine, it would be not perfectly one eighth of an inch all the way around. And I'll, I'll sh you'll see what I mean when I put it together. Okay. And then I am going to be doing some mass assembly of these just to save a little time later on in the project. Okay, so I've got six of these now. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, well, let's see how many I can make. So I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then I have three left over. I'm sure we'll use these somewhere else in the project. So uh, we can make all six. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so now I'm going to do a tape bracelet. We're going to do, um, I'm going to tape all of these photo mats at once. And essentially what I do is I run the tape along the edge. This is Miracle Tape, which is a pressure sensitive double sided tape, very similar to score tape, red line tape, etc. Just costs a lot less. Uh, we have it in our shop. If you want to try a couple rolls. And so carefully I line them all up with this first line of tape, okay? And then once I've got one, I can just flip it over and it's much quicker to then do the rest of the taping, okay? And then just go boom, boom, boom. Okay, and you can get a bunch of photo mats done at once. And what I recommend with this project or any project with a lot of repetitive tasks, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, um, listen to an audio book, put a movie on or your favorite TV show or whatever, music, and just like settle in, you know? Just make 100 photo mats all at once while enjoying an episode of something you really enjoy Get yourself a nice, cool glass of something and just go. Because it can be, I don't know, I find it almost meditative, you know. When your hands are doing something that doesn't require input from your brain, like your conscious brain, when you're in kind of a flow, a work, you know, an unconscious workflow, You can just let your mind kind of drift or enjoy something else. That can really be nice, actually. Very relaxing, very satisfying. Okay, so Gretchen says in the chat that she started the Logger Queen of Minnesota yesterday and she's not sure about it yet. So, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> is it, well, tonally, is it is very serious? I'm just hoping it's not very serious. Like, I'm just really hoping that a book about rival beer dynasties isn't, like, super dramatic and in a, in a stressful, anxiety-inducing way. Since we did just read a book about World War II. <laughs> so... And specifically the impact of it on like everyday people just trying to eke out their existence and live their lives.
It's not serious, but it hasn't pulled you in. Okay. So it's fun in tone, light in tone, but no, no hook, no hook. So anyway, so I'm just going to finish taping all these. And then what I want to do is on the first page, I want to start, well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I won't pre-make, I'll, I'll, I'll finish taping the photos, but now I'm, maybe I won't pre-make the photo wallets. Let, we'll, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Because um, I might want to turn some of them into wallets, which will be easier done if they don't have photo mats on them already. So maybe we will just see. Maybe we will just see. But um, So yeah, The Logger Queen of Minnesota is our next book club book. We'll be discussing it on the last Thursday of May. And then just to bear in mind that that day, we will only have one show. So uh, we'll be discussing it in the afternoon um, of whatever day that is. I think it's the 26th of May. Oh wait, is May 31st a Thursday? May 30, uh, May 31st is a Tuesday. So yeah, May 26th will be the book club day that we discuss the Logger Queen of Minnesota, but it will be, um, yeah, I can't math. So I don't know why I thought 26 plus seven equals, uh, 31 because that would not make any kind of sense. But here we are, here we are. Isn't it funny how I have a job that requires so much math, so much math. So what we're gonna do is um, on Thursday, the 26th, we'll discuss the book and it will only be in, in the afternoon uh, because I have so much stuff to do. I can't do a night show that week. I can't do a night show this week either, which is partially why we're having this show today on Monday. So on Thursday of this week, just bear in mind right now, it's May 9th, 2022. We'll have an afternoon show, but no evening show as well. Because I'm going on vacation, like my first vacation in 10 years, something like that. Like my first time I'm going on vacation and just traveling and it's not even a vacation for Mr. Lifeguard he has to work it's only a vacation for me <laughs> um, I don't know why I laughed like that that was kind of evil but um <laughs> we are going on a for, sh for sure vacation for both of us in August so he will get a vacation this year but anyway so let's see we shall see but yeah i have to leave for that on friday so thursday i will be getting ready packing the car doing all that stuff so we can head out friday morning so we'll only be doing an afternoon show and we're going to orlando 
where he's a conference. He's well, he's going to be at a conference Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but we will be there Friday through Wednesday. So, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he gets a vacation. So he does get to have vacation Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but he doesn't get to have vacation Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, only I will be on vacation. Now he did look and he doesn't have any work obligations in the evenings, just during the day when he's at this conference. Um, so, um, and he's at a conference for some software that they want him to consider using. Um, and he like did the math and the licenses would be something like $35,000 a year. So he said, you know, before we commit to that, let me go to this conference, um, which is being put on by this software com company to showcase their software. And the people speaking at the conference are people who use it in their businesses, talking about how they use it in their businesses to see if he really thinks it's going to be worth it for his whole company to adopt. Doesn't that sound exciting? It's really too bad that I can't join him on this because, you know, it sounds absolutely riveting. Just thrilling stuff. Three day long sales pitch? Come on, who wouldn't want to? Who wouldn't want to? So, I know you're all like, how do we sign up? How do we sign up for this conference? How do we sign up to go on this excursion? I once had to have a, um, when I, I Back when I worked, uh, my company was switching customer management systems. It's like a fancy database uh, for managing a lot of people and their information, if you have to manage a lot of people and their information. And um, our organization had various different departments using extremely old like HR software to manage people software that was designed for like managing you know employees and the employees information um, and it was just you know when you're talking about I mean needing to maintain records on over 150,000 people like and being able to to make reports on those people and whether or not they've done background checks and all of that it was just too outdated so I had to participate in this thing where they had all the companies that wanted to sell us the licenses to their customer management software to upgrade our system. Any, the, the managers of any department that used it, it had to go and listen to these sales pitches and it was just like, kill me now, please. Um, it was excruciating to listen to these like super excited people, like cheerleaders types, you know, just like, trying to make a database for people's phone numbers sound cool. <laughs> if he decides, yeah, I mean, maybe so. Maybe he can just decide on day one that it's not for them. Or conversely, maybe on day one, he'll see a, a really spectacular use case that makes it worth the $35,000 or whatever. You know, who knows who knows so um, now what I'm doing is I'm just cutting these apart so that I have a nice little stack of them ready to go all right and then we will get into working on the first page and what I want to do on the first page is um, very much so I want to make giant photo corners to hold something. Now, whether those giant photo corners are holding, holding a photo wallet or what have you, um, I don't know. So, 
But yeah, maybe I'll encourage him to be very decisive. Although I do think that there's like a couple other people from the company that will be there. I know one of them is someone in his department who works for him who would also be, you know, at least partially responsible for implementing it if he decided to go ahead with it. Um, and so that person is there to be learning as well, I guess. Um, so, you know, it may be, <laughs> it may be that he has to keep showing up anyway, regardless. <laughs> so, all right, so now we've got that. So, Let's make some, so here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so this is the front cover, so let's flip that. So now we're working on this page. And I'm, okay, maybe we'll do, we'll do the, this. So what I wanna do is I wanna put this on here, but I want it in giant photo corners. Now, here's the thing. I put it on the left and I didn't like it on the left because I don't like how this brown looks on. Well, let me just, because it's really going to look like that. See, I don't love how this looks as this, but what we can do is we can make this part of a photo wallet of some sort. Um, so that it's more colorful. So here's what I want to do. Let's find, okay, let's find some, let's see, let's find, I don't know, a really cool, like, big image, maybe. Maybe there's, like, a nice card or something we can kind of use as a jumping off point. So here's my scrap bag. We don't have enough scraps for them to be useful quite yet, but here we go. So if I'm gonna look, and what I mean by like a big image is I mean just a, a piece of paper that has something on it that maybe I don't wanna cover, you know? So, Eh, probably Echo Park is not really going to be where I find that because that's just not their vibe as a company. Yeah, so not in this and that. But we do have crepe paper still and Bow Bunny still. Okay. So... I mean, I have a viewfinder. But that's not quite, I'm thinking I want something, you know, even bigger than that maybe. These are, uh, these go over photographs to give them filters. That's what those are. So let's go to the DIY shop. Paper, this is DIY shop by Crate and Barrel. Nothing I'm using is newer than 2012. So this is all stash. <sighs> okay, so we have this map. We could like zoom in on part of the map if we wanted to. Certainly the typewriter is a possibility. Okay, nothing jumped out at me. But if nothing jumps out at me from Bo Bunny, we're gonna have to create a scene. But you know, Bo Bunny does love their big, um, This is what I'm thinking of. All right. I 
Okay, so this little moment's big memories is something that could certainly work. Let's go ahead and start with that. Okay. And maybe we'll, you know, layer from there. I'm just gonna cut it out with scissors. Um. So this could close on the, close it like so. So that's going to be on the right side. So now it's just, is there something that we could layer over it so it closes from the, I'm going to grab, um, hmm, see uh, over here how we have these double tags? Um, something like that, but larger might be the way to go. So what we would do is we would make two tags. We would make one out of a more like background type paper and one with like a more, um, so like make a tag out of this or this and then, or this or this. These are all background type papers tag bases out of those and then or this newspaper I kind of like this yellow okay so we make a tag out of this the reason I got like the yellow is because yellow this more yellow with this more blue will be kind of very dynamic um, and then to go over it I think we're gonna want something uh, something where we can get like a word or something like that so let's go look towards I don't, I don't, let me go here. Let me just, just. So I've got those. Certainly can use those. Uh, No, 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 not right, not, uh, not quite. Let's see you. Okay, so this sheet right here, I'm going to pull that out. And what I think I want to do is Um, I'm going to have to get more supplies. <laughs> so I'm going to go to, I have a, um, I have a bin called journaling and I'm looking for things that are going to, uh, coordinate with this paper collection, things like this, this type of stuff. This, this actually might have some stuff in it. This is going to be a little too bright. This, maybe, maybe this. 
maybe this, ooh, maybe this, that. I'm looking, 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 maybe that. Trying to find like bigger things. Here we go. Here's some bigger stuff. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Ah! Library cards. Okay. What else? What else do we have buried in here? Okay. Uh, Oh man, Se more, th more seven, oh my gosh, I have so much stuff. Okay. All right, okay. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh my gosh, this project. <laughs> okay, this is just like watch Catherine use her stash. Okay, so I'm thinking of stuff like this okay like these are kind of prompts something that's gonna look these are a little too specific but maybe we'll Okay, so here we, all right, here we go. I think this is gonna be a good answer. I'm looking for, here we, like this. I'll look back on this and smile. Or this enjoy the journey. I never wanna forget this, you're my number one. These are the type of things Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I'll look back on this and smile. Okay. And just, oh my gosh, Teresa Collins. Okay, I don't think that is gonna, I want to look through this one as well. This is Pebbles also. Yeah, I want something colorful. Let me get that out. Okay. All right, so let's just get everybody else out of the way for a second here. I'm just gonna throw it back into its bin. And then what we'll do is we'll make a tag, a layered tag tag. Um, so one thing you can do when you're working on projects is if you see something that you like the look of but that isn't the right size, right, um, for your project, just copy it. <laughs> just make, make one that will work better for your project. Okay, so what I mean is... Um, that I liked from the Bow Bunny the way 
that these tags look. Oh well, I lost them. Maybe they're still on my desk. How would I know if they were still on my desk, honestly? How would I know? All right. So I want to make a tag that's going to act as kind of like a closure. And I want to find or layer a tag or something. Color wise, these are okay, but I think, I don't know, that because they're square, they're not quite gonna work, so. Okay, so this one, what I'm, I'm looking at the backs of them now. I'm thinking maybe I just wanna do like patterns. Okay, let's, try and figure out what would make a cute tag to, to look with that tag. All right, so hmm. All right. I'm gonna start with, uh, let's make it a six inch tag. So we'll make it three inches by six inches. So I'm gonna cut my paper to seven inches. So it'll be seven inches by three inches. Okay, all right. So what's going to happen with this is I'm just going to score it at six inches. Okay. All right. And I'm going to tag the corners. I'm going to use the large angle punch from We Are Memory Keepers which I need to empty still. Okay. All right, so what this is gonna do is, this is gonna hook on here. So we need to make something for this to hook onto as well. So this piece is three inches by five and a half inches. So I need a piece that's three and a quarter by five and three quarters. But not three and a quarter, four, uh, four and a quarter because I need it to be wide enough to have one inch on the other side. So four and a quarter and then we score 
at three and a quarter. Okay. All right, and this is also, okay, so this is gonna get nested onto that. And then this will hook over here, and then this will hook over here. We'll put whatever on it that we're gonna put on it. All right, so on the back of this, let's put something for journaling, it's just like a journaling spot. Unfortunately, I think with this, all the lines are pretty much straight up and down. However, uh, nah. um, oh, here's a grid, okay. Let's go ahead and pull this out. We can use that grid. And I'm gonna pull this out and see if I can do something with this. Okay, so on the back, so this thing is three by six. So this needs to be two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And we want to cut the scallop off first. Okay. All right. And then this I'm going to chomp with the small angle now. Okay. And see if I like how the small angle looks or if I think it looks a little weird. I think it looks a little weird, so I'm gonna use the large angle. Okay. All right, so this'll be like so. Okay, so this'll be for journaling. So now the question is, can we do something with this? And what I'm gonna do is, well, let me cut the scallop off. So just because something is wide when you need it to be tall or tall when you need it to be wide doesn't mean you cannot use it. It just means you might have to be a little bit more creative with how you use it. Okay, so with this one, we're gonna have to shorten it a little bit because we've got to get rid of that scallop at the bottom, just fine. Just makes our record player is just gonna be a little cut off. And then we get rid of the scallop on the side here. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I'm gonna give myself a half an inch. So I'm gonna have this come to the half inch mark and then I'm gonna uh, use my knife to cut up to uh, the uh, um, washi tape on both sides. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a flag. So I cut straight in and then I cut from the corner to where I cut straight in. All right, and that's gonna make a flag. And so what I can now do is think about where I could put this 
on my tag where it would be cute, okay? And it looks like if I do it like so, I can do it like so, or I can do it like this, and I'll just lose some of the turntable. I think I like it more like this, okay? All right, so then what I would do is I'll be removing this portion, okay? So, I'm gonna ink the whole thing. Not, I'm not gonna ink the top because that's gonna get cut off, at least part of it is. So it's more just about inking where I won't be able to reach. Well, I just inked the top even though I said I didn't need to, but it's fine, whatever. Okay. All right, now. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit the And then I'm gonna go up here on the top. Okay, okay. Just gonna rub over the back. And then uh. okay. So there's a spot to do some journaling. There's some embellishing, okay? So we'll just ink the whole tag around the outside. This will go on the back. And I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna put a, p a metal piece behind it. Put a metal piece. So, magnet, tin cap. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and stick this metal cap down. I'll cover it with tape. I'm gonna go ahead and use ATG on this. It's not really ideal, um, but just fold it, the tape to the back, okay? And then stick this down. Okay. All right, so now we've got that. That's the back. Okay, so we have a place for a magnet if we want. Let's go ahead and stick a magnet on it. Just as a... reminder that we need to do something with that magnet. Okay. So now on the front, we're going to do two and three quarters by five and three quarters again with this paper. Okay. And we're 
we're gonna make this a tag as well. Let me just put tape on it first. I'm gonna go ahead and use this like ticket, more tickety looking thing. Side. All right. Then, chomp. Ink. And again, do I know what I'm doing with this book? No. This is unplanned. Just going through my stuff. Do I think it'll look cute eventually? Yes. So now that's there. So now I want to put a second tag, slightly smaller and slightly offset. So that's what we have to figure out. Like what's our second tag going to be? And I kind of like this. So once again, we're going to, uh, this time I'm going to use the small angle because it's so tiny. Okay. And we're just going to like stick it on top, slightly offset like that. Okay. And I'm not really going to stick it down. So I'm just going to. Um, put a little bit of ATG right on it, okay? I'm going to stick it down where I want it stuck down. Then I'm going to take my corner chomper, not my corner chomper, my power punch, and I'm just going to punch right through all the layers, okay? And then I'm going to get my... Um, Brads, not brads, eyelids, and grommets. And then I'm going to put that through it. Okay. And then onto the back. I'm going to set it with my crocodile. Okay. All right. Okay. So we've got this. Okay. So I think I'm going to put this farther down. And this one, well, yeah, I'll put it farther up. Okay. All right. So this one we now need to ink. Okay. And like I said before, I'm just going to be very messy with um, these pieces. Okay. All right. Now, okay. on the back, 
going to put a piece of metal. So this will be held shut. And then tape over. Okay. Now. Something to go on the back. Is what we need. paper is so disorganized so now I can't find anything where did you come from where did this come from Ugh. why can't I find it I can't even find the sheet it was cut out of. There it is. I want the thing on the back. All right. So I'm just going to cut. And is this, this, this is exactly the right size, so, okay. All right, so we need, all righty, I'm just going to trim this to two and three quarters, right? Yeah, two and three quarters. Wait, no. What is this? Three. It's three. All right. I, yeah, I'm hiding stuff from myself. Okay, so it's not quite big enough. It's three by like five and a quarter, I think. So that's okay. All right, so this can go on the back, but you see it's, oh, it's not three by five and a quarter, it's three by, uh, three by what? Three by five and a half, five and a half. Okay, so if it's three by five and a half, then I just have to cut a quarter inch off either end. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it. All right. And stick it down. All right, okay, so that's stuck down. So now I just wanna cover that little gap right there. But in a way that looks like kind of haphazard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these. Okay, 
and then I'm going to cut them apart from each other. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick these down with ATG. But only rub on this top part, not rub on this bottom part, because I'm gonna pull, uh, use my craft knife to cut it into a cute shape later. Cute shape, I don't know. So again, I'm just rubbing on the top part. So when I say I'm gonna cut it into a Q shape, I'm gonna line that corner, that edge up with my mat. I'm gonna get a ruler. And this requires some finesse, but not a great amount of finesse. I say as I struggle to even line this up. Okay. So I wanna be an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I'm just mostly eyeballing that. I'm gonna come in with my craft knife and I'm gonna lightly cut just the pattern paper, okay? And then I'm gonna try and peel it up. Now, if it doesn't come up all in one piece, you cut it too lightly, too lightly. I need to go over it again. There we go. Okay, I need to go, this section is two layers deep, so it's not surprising I have to go over it again. Okay. And then you might have like this little area where I have something I need to scrape up. Maybe I can just rub it up with my finger. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay. Now to get it inked, just um, rub. Okay. All right, so now there we go. Okay. So now this is ready to get stuck down. Just needs a magnet. All right, now I want my magnets to be facing the same direction, so I'm gonna make them both right side up. I'm gonna put a glue dot on them. And then I'm gonna get these, you know, lined up where I want them. I'm just gonna press. Okay. All right, so now the um, magnets are in place. Apparently the magnets are, this one is being a jerk face. All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna just add these photos to the front to hold the magnets down. And now you'll see why it's eight and seven eighths by six and a, by six and a half. And that is because just really rubbing over that magnet there. What a messy desk. What is going on? I don't think I'm, um... <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stay clean. 
I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep a tidy project uh, or a tidy desk with this project. Okay. All right. So now that that's down, so the next thing I have to do is just put tape on these. And I lost my tape. There it is. Okay. So I'm just going to put tape on the flap of these. And with this one, I'm going to stay about an eighth of an inch away from the score line because I don't want any of that tape to show. So I'm not right on that score line. All right. So now all I have to do, it looks like I'm crafting. is peel this tape, okay? And then peel this tape. So now we've got this. All right. Now on the back, we'll just put two more photo mats. And what we have is what I'm hoping will look in the book kind of like a little stack of stuff sitting on a desk, okay? Okay, so back over here. All right, so this is that, okay? Now, what I wanna do next I think. So this is how it's going to look in the book. So again this piece is kind of free floating and you can kind of pull up on it to make it look bent so that people can really see the texture. And then we've got that on the back and then that on the back there. Okay. All right. So how are we going to stick this in the book? I want to do a photo corner. So and I want to use this paper. So I'm going to show you if I can find my scraps of this paper, which remains to be seen. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm gonna show you how to make a giant photo corner. All right, so we just need to cut this into a square. So whatever size, so it's width wise, it's like three and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut it into a three and a half inch square. Okay, so this is how you make a, a giant photo corner. All right, so I'm going to cut this. I'm going to fold it in half. All right, so you start with a square. You can make this any size. All right, start with a square. Fold it in half. And then fold it in half the other way. Okay. Okay. All right, so now you have something that looks like this. All right. Cut. To the center from one corner. All right. And you can see how you're starting to get the ability to make a triangle shape. But to get all the way closed. All right. We're going to have to remove one of these flaps. So just cut it out. Okay. So now I can double, ta-da, and that's, that's literally it. Now we, have a, now we have a photo corner. We can just stick that in there like so, okay? All right, now should we make two? How easy was it to make that photo corner, by the way? Any, any size giant photo corner you want, you can make. 
All right, now. All right, so what we're gonna do is this piece gets taped to this piece. I'm gonna glue it actually. Apparently I'm not gonna glue it because my glue is clogged. It's okay. All right. All right, so glue. Okay. Okay. Um, let's just let this, um, I'm gonna stick it under there. Let's make another one. Let's make another one. Let's make two. Let's make two. So I make another three and a half inch square. Okay, so fold it in half like so to make a triangle. And then like so to make another triangle. Okay, and then remove, you know, one of these uh, little, one of these triangles, any triangle you want. Okay, and then just fold it back again. Don't worry about if it's perfect or not because you can just trim it afterwards. So if stuff's poking out one corner or another, it's like whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, the only thing you wanna make sure you do is just don't glue it shut. You know, just wanna make sure you can still see inside. So there we go. All right, so now it's time to clean this one up. So if you have like some tape poking out, you can just trim it off and then just ink. Okay. And then we'll just put tape on it. And I'm gonna let my tape go over the pointy edges. That way I'll know I have tape all the way to the point. Okay. And then I can just trim that tape off. All right, so then I'm just gonna stick this on my mat, okay? So I'm just gonna stick it on, just like that, okay? And then we'll take this one and we'll do the same thing. We'll trim. All right, ink. Tape. It's 
stick this on the other corner. Okay, then once you've got your corners on where you want them, okay, then flip them over and peel your tape. And then reposition them if they get messed up. Okay, and then put your piece exactly where you want it. If you need to adjust a corner, adjust it. And then you can press your corners into place. Now remove that and burnish. Okay. All right, and now you have a place to slide in your photo mat. All right, woo! Okay, so, all right, there we go. So that's a pretty good start. Now we have our piece. If you wanna do it like this, you can as well. You can flip it either way. Okay, now that can go in there. Won't it make it hard to get the rings in? I don't think so. You mean these rings? I mean, it'll be hard to get out with the rings. You could do just one, then you can lift it straight up. Um, however you want to do it. You can also give yourself more room. Like you don't have to put them tight, as tight as this, but there we go. All right, now, what do I want? I want to stick, but yeah, anytime you're pulling against the binding, it's a little bit more difficult, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Um, however, you could photo corner this edge if you wanted to, if that's something you're really worried about. Okay, now. Um, all right, so let's see, what else? do we want to do? Um, alrighty. Now, one other thing that we can do is think about, do we want to have anything laying over top? I'm just going to grab like, I think I, yeah. So I just want to think about how I'm going to have, how I want to layer the stuff in between the two pages. Or, and what I want to have laying where, you know. I have to think about how both sides will look. Okay, I want. grab this. I saw this earlier. Look at this. Uh, look at this. I don't think that adhesive was acid free. <laughs>
right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick these two things up together so that I can flip it over to the back and make a pen mark where I need my holes. Okay. And then we'll chomp with the quarter inch thingy. Okay. And then we'll put eyelets. Oh, good grief. Um, ah, here they are. <laughs> this is why you got to have an organized desk. <laughs> Else you can't find your stuff. When you want to find it. <laughs> All right. So let's get this chomped. We'll just have one long class with just one big recording. Man, why are you fighting me, hmm? Don't you want to be part of this cute book? What's your deal, man? So that'll go there. Okay. Let's do what are we gonna put? Okay, so we could put this in here. It'd have to be shorter, which would be fine. Let's see. stamp this. I'm going to stamp this directly on here. I'm just holding this because I want to get an idea of where I need to cut this tag down just to visualize. So I'm just going to make a mark where I need to cut off the bottom of the tag. Okay. And then I can stick my tag and I'm not going to be able to, um, okay, so I need, hmm, all right, so normally, I can kind of just stick it down this way, but that will put the thing too close to the hole. So th this is a nitpick. It's, you know, it's totally unnecessary, but um, I'm just gonna stamp it like this instead. So, uh, so if I line up the bottom of my tag with the bottom of this grid, then that'll be as if I line it up with this corner. Okay. All 
All right, well, if I'd had more confidence, we would have gotten there. <laughs> so, um, almost, I was almost there. All right, there we go. Okay, so just gonna stamp it again. Now this time I can do it because I can just line this up with the edge of the ruler and use the misty, you know, the way the misty was kind of intended. All right, there we go. All right. Okay, so now their adhesive has completely broken down. So just gonna put just a little bit of ATG, just, or not ATG, Miracle Tape. Just kind of where I can reach. Okay, so that's going to go like that, actually like that. How cute, okay, and because I have, um, what else should we stick in there? Let's stick some other stuff in there. Can I even see my desk to find things to stick in there? Ah, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out and I'm going to uh, all right. I'm gonna stick this to this. Okay. All right. And the way that I'm gonna stick it is I'm just gonna use the tiny attacher and staple it. Okay. Well, let's run some ATG. So at least it has a little adhesive. Okay. So I'm gonna just line it up where I want it. Okay. And then I'm gonna tiny attacher it. There we go. So it looks like I just stapled it on there. Now this tag is still going to fit. Okay. So, okay. We are just fine with stuff so far. So we want something to like also stick in here. So now let's look and see if we have, oh, this is actually even the right color. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, and let's stick something on the back of it too. Let's stick this telegram.
it'll be a journaling spot. And again, like I said, I just want this to look like a junk journal. Okay. So that it has that same thrown together made from ephemera stuff, like look, but it has journaling spots, photo spots, etc. So that goes in there. And again, when it's flipped over, you'll see another photo through it. Okay, so, you know, even though there's stuff in here, it's fine. Okay, I wanna like a tag or let's go to the back of this and see if there's anything. I just wanna put a little splash of color in there. something kind of mm -hmm. I mean, I probably don't need, need something in there, but. Okay, let's see. All right, I've got this, remember this moment sticker? I like the color but it's, um, it's a sticker, so I have to just back it on something so it won't be sticky anymore. So I'm just gonna stick it on a piece of my brown cardstock. Okay, and then I'll get my corner, or not my corner chomper, my, Uh, power punch. Okay. And then I'll finish doing chomps. All right, so now we have our little bag of cuteness there. All right, so just to recap, get out of here. Oh my gosh. Okay, you don't have to be the center of attention. Well, now you've done it. Now you're getting mutilated. How do you like that, hmm, 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 hmm? Being sassy? Well, now you're getting your arm chopped off. Yeah, that's what's happening. All right, okay, so um, here we go. So we've got the beginnings of our book coming together. So you can see the kind of the impression uh, that we're going for. So I do want 
to get, I want something here, but that's not part of this. Like I want to almost put a tag in front, like a, something like this. Where's that? There we go. Let's see if we can find something in here that we can just turn into a tag. <laughs> Fran says that she's she now she's afraid if she's too sassy she's gonna get things chopped off. Hey, you know it can happen. It can happen. All right, let's take this. You're just my type. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, trim the sides so that it's not a uh, scallop anymore. Okay. All right, so now it's like six, okay, it's just about six inches. So it needs to be just about three inches wide to be. Let's do three and a quarter by six. There we go. All right, so we're gonna make it three and a quarter by six. Okay, so it's gonna get chomped. I mean, this is, okay, it's cool. I don't need tape any, I don't need tape to make, to make crafts. I don't need tape to make crafts, okay? I can just, you know, I can just wing it. have this open like I want to that's just tempting fate I don't even know what I was thinking candy you you're missing the messiest desk day in the history of this show all right okay. all right so now we're gonna peel this tape and stick it to another scrap. So. Okay, so All right, so now it looks like this. So we're gonna chomp again. Okay. And ultimately this is gonna get stuck right in there. Yes, okay. All right, so now this just needs something on the back. Hmm. I'll just see, I'm gonna use this. So, what is this? Three and a half, what? What is this? Three and a half by six and a half? Three and a quarter by six. Three and a quarter by six. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this to three and a quarter by six. And I'm going to put tape. Oh yeah, Kitty was not about class today. She was not. She was just not having it. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna chomp
All right, ink. Okay, remove tape. Stick it down. We're gonna find Let's get a, let's do the meat market. No. Yeah, let's do the meat market. That's crazy and weird. Although we have a meat market we go to, that's where we get lamb shanks. Okay. Tiny chomps, small angle. Okay. Ink. Just to remind, then we're going to do just ATG across the top. Stick it down crooked. Okay. Then on the front, we're going to chomp through all the layers. I'm just eyeballing the center. Okay. Get one of these. And one of these. And then uh, chomp it with your crocodile, which you totally have not buried on your desk under a bunch of crap. What? Crocodile, where are you, crocodile? I lost my crocodile. What? Crocodile, what are you doing? Are you on the floor? Well, that's a problem. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Ah, I found it in a drawer that it doesn't go in. Apparently I'm just throwing stuff in drawers now. Just random drawers. Okay. All right, so there we go. Or put it meat market forward if you if you like, but there we go. Okay, so. Let me just close this. All right, so here's the book. Okay. All right, so this is the page that we've just completed. So we are here. So it works like this, we'll pull this tag out, pull this tag out, flip this over, flip this over on the back. So we've got room for four photos. And then tuck that in there. And then we're starting to work on what goes in between. So this is our first element that goes in between. So this goes in between page one and page two. So our first in between is a vellum bag from um, Cosmo Cricket, I think, is who did this. Um, I, when we come back on Thursday, let me um, start with a mini tutorial on how to make a vellum bag like this. But um, if so, that if you don't have um, if you don't have vellum bags lying around your craft room, you you can if you want to. And this one has gold uh, stars on it. And the way that you would get gold stars on your vellum bag is before you turn it into a bag, just stamp it with embossing ink and um, use metallic embossing powder, gold metallic embossing powder to emboss stars on it or polka dots or whatever you wanted. Um, so we'll go over that on Thursday, how to make vellum bags. So Thursdays, the first part of Thursday's show will be how to make vellum bags and uh, we'll start there and then we'll continue on working on the in-between. 
But here is what's in the vellum bag. Okay, so first of all, this is stapled to the bag, so it just stays with the bag. And then in the bag, we've got a tag that will hold two four by six photos. We've got a double-sided journaling spot. Of course, you could just put another photo mat in there if you wanted more photos. And then this little ticket from the collection just to be cute. So that can all go right in the bag. And there we go. So that's our first little in between. And so this is what I'm kind of envisioning for the album is to have lots of these little in between bits so that that's what gives it that like junk drawer sort of look. So anyway, um, I guess I'm going to go clean my room now. So I hope you all had a wonderful <laughs> scrapbook day this weekend and that you have a wonderful evening. Um, I'm going to go upload this video and clean my desk, which is probably going to take me a long time. Um, and then um, I will see you on Thursday. So I'll be back on Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern USA time. Link in the video description for time zones if you need to convert that to your time zone. And I will see you soon. Bye now.